Hello everyone! Today I will be talking about the rarest big cat species, the merleopard. Its scientific name is Panthera pardus orientalis and it is a northern climate adapted leopard subspecies. Let's start with some basic information on this leopard subspecies and on some terminology. The mer leopard is a leopard subspecies native to the mer region of Russia and China. It is considered one of the rarest animals in the world and has been listed as critically endangered since 1996. It has a lighter coat than other leopard subspecies to help it blend into its habitat, especially when there is snow on the ground. This leopard species also has larger rosettes that are more widely spaced than those of other leopards. Rosettes are what the spots on a leopard are called. Its fur is thick and can grow as long as 7.5 centimeters to help protect it from the cold climate. Amur leopards go by many other names as well, including Far East Leopard, the Manchurian Leopard, and the Korean Leopard. There are many of these leopards living in captivity in places such as zoos, where their lifespan is up to 20 years. In the wild, however, they live to be around 10 to 15 years old. It is a solitary species that mainly meets up with others of their own kind when it's time to reproduce and have cubs. However, even though they like to live alone, male leopards have been known to help their mates raise their cubs. Female leopards are ready to have cubs at around 3 to 4 years of age, where they will search for a male once they are ready. They are pregnant for about 12 weeks and can have between 1 and 4 cubs at a time. However, they most often have twins. The cubs will stay with their mom and learn how to survive until they are 2 years old, in which they will leave their mother and start their own lives. In zoos, it has been found that Amur leopards will breed seasonally, meaning that a particular season and not throughout the year. They are seen to reproduce in late spring and early summer. Now let's move on to their habitat. Amur leopards love cold climates and have adapted to these climates. They are found in small numbers in mainly northeastern China. They used to live in a large range that had a large population in northeast China until their population dropped dramatically after the 1970s. The range of an animal is the areas in which they can be found in the wilds. They live in temperate forests in northern China and avoid grassland areas. They used to be found in many mountain ranges, including the Southern Lesser, Kingan Mountains, Changbai Mountain, and Wanda Mountains. Amur leopards have also been spotted in Russia in the Amur region where they get their name. In the 1980s, their population was limited to just the Wanda Mountains and Changbai Mountains. In 2000 to 2014, they were mainly found in Hunshun and Waking but now they are limited to one small population group in the wild that coexists with Amur leopards as of 2018. Through research and placing of camera traps, which are where if an animal passes the camera it takes a picture, population sizes were able to be found throughout many years. In 2008, 14 to 20 adults and 5 to 6 cubs were found in Russia's Primyor region. In 2015, 42 leopards, 21 which were males, 17 of females, and 2 which were unknown, and 2 cubs were photographed. In 2018, it was found that there were a little more than 80 leopards in the wild, and in 2019, there were around 84 leopards in the wild that were documented. The reasons for the leopard's decrease in population will be discussed next, along with the efforts to bring the leopard back from the brink of extinction. However, before I talk about those details, we will look at the leopard's hunting habits and diet, which is important to know when talking about why their population dropped in the first place. Amur leopards mainly eat deer, specifically Siberian roe deer and Sika deer. However, their diet also includes badgers, rabbits or hares, raccoon dogs, red foxes, European otters, musk deer, dogs, and cattle. A study on the mer leopard scat, which are the droppings, was done and found that they primarily ate roe deer and sika deer with a small portion of mid-sized and small prey animals. As an ambush predator, the mer leopard will hide and wait until their prey is close enough and then with a burst of energy pursue the animal and catch it. They are mainly nocturnal hunters, they tend to hunt at night, 
And when they have an unfinished meal, they will hide the prey in trees and other places from other animals that want to eat it. Now that we have covered a lot of background information of the Murrah Leopard, we can get into the threats that they face. Their main threats include poaching, deforestation, inbreeding, and diseases. A Murrah Leopards are poached, which means hunted and illegally killed for their fur, which was considered valuable when poaching was more likely to occur. However, poaching has decreased due to some conservation efforts, which we will get into later. Poaching also happened to their prey, which caused a decrease in the amount of food available to the Murrah Leopard. Due to the decrease in the food available, the remaining prey animals could not support a large population of predators. A Murrah Leopards and a Murrah Tigers both prefer to eat Sika Deer and Roe Deer, although Leopards have a more vast diet than the Tigers. Due to their prey populations decreasing, it caused the Leopards population to decrease as well. However, poaching is not the only reason the population dropped. Another reason the population dropped is due to deforestation where local forests are destroyed to allow for humans to move in or for other reasons. Deforestation was caused by logging, which is the harvesting of trees for wood, human development, such as towns and agriculture areas, and forest fires, either set by humans or natural. The fires caused just as big an issue for the leopards as the development and logging caused, as the fires caused grasslands to appear in place of the forests. Which, if you remember from earlier, the leopards tend to avoid the grasslands. Diseases also caused a lot of issues. One of the diseases being studied is the canine distemper virus, as it is affecting the leopard's population. Researchers are looking into why the virus appeared in leopard populations and how they can lessen its effects on the population. Inbreeding is also one of the main causes for the decline of the Murrah leopard population. Inbreeding is where related individuals have offspring together. The main causes of inbreeding are due to not enough unrelated leopards in an area, since many were killed by poachers or died due to other events. This led to not as many viable breeding pairs that were unrelated and could have a healthy offspring. Due to inbreeding in any population, bad traits will be more likely to become strong in the populations. There was also a bottleneck where, due to the loss of habitat and natural range, smaller populations were separated by human development and by grasslands. This led to the leopards having to find mates within their small portion of range and reduces the introduction of new genetics into the population. This is mainly because you would have a population in one area and a different population in another area. They would be separated and unable to interact with each other and breed so they would have to resort to other leopards in their small area rather than being able to disperse and have a mixture of the genetics. Research was done by Yang Li and their partners on the past and current habitat distribution of the Murrah leopard. Information about past ranges was gathered from gazetteers, data from fur trade records, hunter records, sightings, wildlife surveys, and conflicts. Fauna surveys, specimen data with geographic information, scientific surveys in nature reserves, scientific research, and the news. They used this research to compile a paper on the current and past habitat range and how it decreased in the past 100 years or so. Many conservation efforts were taken in the past and are taken currently. One of the efforts is a park made specifically for the leopards. In this park, the leopards are monitored and kept track of using camera traps. This park caused the population of leopards to increase as the leopards were safer from poaching than in unprotected areas. The World Wildlife Foundation works with traffic to reduce poaching of Amur leopards by reducing the illegal trade for their products. The Amur leopard is also listed on the Sites Appendix 1, which prevents all commercial trade of the species 
which means you cannot trade their fur or their claws or any other parts of the leopard for money. You cannot poach them or anything of that sort either. The World Wildlife Foundation also works to reduce the poaching of prey species and increasing the population of prey. Lands in China and Russia are also protected to help protect the leopard and prey populations. The Phoenix Fund has led a successful international campaign to prevent an oil pipeline from being built in the Mer Leopards Range, which would have disturbed the natural habitat and likely caused the population to decline even further. A way we can help is by petitioning to have the prey animals of the Mer Leopard protected as well. It is believed that if the populations of prey increase, as will the leopards, as they will have more food to thrive on. Also, we should strive to stay educated on this species and stay educated on what would happen if the mer leopard went extinct, and the effects it could have on the habitat it lives in. Overall, the main points to take away from this are that the mer leopard is one of the most critically endangered big cats of the world. Its decline in population is largely due to hunting of prey animals and deforestation. Forest fires also cause their natural habitat to become grasslands, which reduces their range. Many conservation efforts are taking place along with research into the current and past ranges of the leopards to understand how development, logging, inbreeding, and disease affect the populations of a mer leopards over time. I hope you all have learned something new today and are now more knowledgeable about the mer leopard, what it is, and what threats face it.